Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is Deanna here today? I feel like one of those, um, you know, like newscasters that are like trying to type live. Like, so now we are moving on to Deanna, who is going to show us blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, um, I can't hear you. Can you see me? <laughs> it's one of those things. Good morning. If you're there, say hello. Um, so we know that you're there. I have no idea. Um, oh, yes, I see it. How are you all today? I hope you're having a great day. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Deanna, and I am here to do um, a live so long. Um, so I know that our patterns that were on sale this week for Wacky Wednesday included the shark bite. And I just love that pattern. I thought, oh, hey, I want to um, sew one of those up. So why don't we just do it together? Because I know that there's uh, a lot of us out there who just want to sew, just to have some stress-free time, some fine time of sewing together. So I figured if we go ahead and sew it together, um, we don't. you don't necessarily have to be sewing the same pattern. We're just kind of sewing together. Um, good morning. Hi. Hello. Um, and then we can just do it together. But before um, before I get going is if you um, can go ahead and just uh, log into that stream yard and give them a um, give them a, a um, what is the word? How do I draw blanks on words? Speaking is hard. Um, let them know that it's okay to use your name. Then I can see who is actually commenting. Because right now, a lot of it is just Facebook user, Facebook user. So it would be kind of nice to know um, who Facebook user is. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to post a comment to see what it what it does. Um, yeah. See, mine says Ellie and Max. So if you can go on there and just let them know that um, it's okay for them to use your name, then I can see who it is that it is commenting. Then I can really say, hi, Kendra, or hi, Katie, or hi, Deanna, whatever your name may be. So um, that would be really fun. Well, so today um, we are going to be sewing, like I said, the shark bite. And I am just going to be sewing along um, and, you know, sort of talking and answering any questions that you uh, um, have for me. Um, and then if you are sewing the shark bite, you're welcome to just sew it along with me. And if you're not sewing the shark bite, then you're welcome to sew along with me, whatever it is that you're uh, sewing. Hi, Kat. Hi, Helen. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so you're welcome to. Hi, Cindy. Um, you're welcome to just sew along with me. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing, just ask me. Um, I love questions. Um, so I know some of you have already joined me for a sew along before. Um, we have our scheduled sew alongs are usually every other week. We have a scheduled sew along here at Ellie and Mac where we sew, you know, I'll let you know what pattern we're sewing ahead of time. And then we do it throughout a whole week period, Monday through Friday. Um, and we do a little bit every day. Um, as of right now, hello. As of right now, we're just doing, um, we're working on the flounce top. I'm gonna show it to you because I love it. And it's working out so beautifully. Look, we're almost done. We're gonna finish it tomorrow. Do you love it? I know it's kind of hard to see right now because it's not all the way done. So cute. And so that's what we're working on this week um, over on our the event tab. If you hit the event tab, on our um, Facebook page, you will see all our sew alongs are listed on there, and that's one of the sew alongs on there that we're finishing. And then about every other week, we do a new one. This is just a fun, let's sew together, um, spur of the moment. I was thinking, I'm gonna make this shark bite, and a lot of people love it. Um, some people have some time on their hands right now, so let's just do it together, right? So um, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Um, I have my pattern already printed out because I've made this pattern before because I love it. I really do. I think that the shark bite pattern is kind of understated. Um, we don't talk about it a lot. We don't see it a lot, but it is so flattering. Um, it lays nicely and I love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, um, let me see. Click on this. I'm trying to remove it, but I won't. Mm -hmm. 
I'm trying to figure out. There we go. I got it. Sorry. This is like, like I said earlier, it's like, you know, when um, newscasters go live for the first time and they're like, you know, I can't hear you. I don't know what's going on. That's me right now. I don't usually go live. So this is me uh, trial and error thing. Okay. So thank you. Yes, I am wearing the lucky girl. Another pattern on sale. I love it. It's super cute. Um, yes, one of my favorite. I, I know I say that about every pattern. One of my favorites, but they are all my favorite. Okay, so I already have my pattern cut out, um, but I haven't cut out my fabric. And so my fabric is laying on my mat right now. I'm going to tilt you down so you can see it. Don't get dizzy. Don't mind all my stack of projects over here. So here's my pattern. Okay. And um, I have it laid out on my mat. Um, I have, uh, here's part of my pattern. Here's some started patterns. You know, you all, that's okay. Cause you know, you all saw my picture of my sewing room the other day. So you get to see it now for real, for real, how it's a mess. But anyway, you know, we got so many patterns, so little time. So um, with this pattern we've got, we're gonna go ahead and cut up the front and the back. Um, the, they are front and back are cut on the fold. I think everything on this pattern is pretty much cut on the fold. So I've got my fold line right here against my fold. This is, I folded my fabric in half, as you can see. And this is my fold. Um, this is my, it, you have a front and a back and you add the neck piece for it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the back first. So I'm gonna put, put my neck piece right here back on there. Like I said, I already made this pattern, so that's why it's cut apart already, because um, I already made it. I'm using a rayon spandex, uh, because I just love the way the rayon spandex drapes. Um, so, yes, Sonia, you need to make it. Um, so I love the way that the rayon spandex drapes, so that's why. Now, this pattern has two options. It has the option of doing uh, all one color, as you can see the the little like shape that goes out on the side is still attached but there's also a second option where you can unattach this side and make this part color blocked and i know you've seen the inspirations online on our facebook page and also um i've done where i do the back one color and the front a different color just because i love a little funky touch of color on the back um so yeah so there it is Okay, so my back, my back is cut out. So now that my back is cut out, I can go ahead and get rid of that piece right here, put it aside and cut my front. I'm gonna put my piece aside. You know what, I should have probably ironed. Do you iron your um, fabric before you cut it out? Like, especially like something like rayon spandex like this right here, because it's kind of wrinkly and I feel like, I don't want to end up with uh, them not matching up. I always forget. I always think I should go ahead and cut it. I mean, iron it, and then I always forget to iron it. Do you have that? Do you iron it? Oh, yes, I love the tie-dye. I'm trying to read the comments. I can answer. Um, I know. I know. Uh, sometimes it's wrinkly, but you know what? I am just, are you like one of those people? Okay, so I am the type that just kind of goes and does it. Just jump in and do it. Let's do it. I'm not gonna take my time to iron, I'm just gonna do it. Or are you one of those people who said, who says, you know, we gotta take our time, we gotta do it correctly. And you know what? Those people get things done. My mother-in-law is one of those that, um, she takes her time and she does it, does it correctly. My husband's like that too. I'm like, more, let's do it. And then, you know, when I'm in the middle of a project and I'm like, ooh, I probably should have taken my time with that. Yes, I know, I'm like that. All right, so I've got, now that I've already cut my front, my back, now I'm gonna cut my front. See how it's a little bit lower the neckline um, than my back. So I'm cutting that. If you don't use rotary cutters yet, you really should think about it. it. Makes things a lot easier to cut around the pattern when you use a rotary cutter. Look at that. And even this rotary cutter is dull. I need to get a new one. But um, it makes it so much easier to cut around a pattern. So much easier. 
but just be careful because what I've done before, have you ever done this? So I don't even know why, um, why I did it, but I kind of opened it up and um, I was like rolling it and I put my finger like right on there, like when, and like slit my finger open right there. Have you ever done that? Be really, really careful when you use these things. They are dangerous. All right, so I'm gonna put it aside. Now, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you is this. Um, if you're doing your pattern, uh, usually um, I will fold it up after I'm done. I print my size. On this one, I printed more than one size um, because I thought I was gonna make it for other sizes, so I wanted to print another size, and usually what I'll do is I'll use like Swedish tracing paper or something like that and copy it. But usually I fold it and I stick it. I have these kind of envelopes. I know people ask me all the time what I do with my patterns. I have these kind of envelopes and I stick it in the envelope for later, nicely organized. And then I pack them up, put them away. Um, uh, and then I've had people also ask me how, what do I use to glue my patterns together? I use just regular purple glue. See, purple glue, and it works really great. And I found that, that I'm not endorsing them, but I know that I found that Elmer's glue works the best when I go to glue my patterns. Especially this is like this is like two times stronger. And so it stays on really nicely for when I open them up again because I fold them, put them away, open them up again later. Um, so it works really, really great. Um, yes, we already worked on the uh, flounce so along day four today. That's over on our event already finished for the day. So if you didn't get to watch it already, we started that one at 10. So if you didn't get to watch it already, you can go on the hashtag replay and watch it again. And you can watch it again if you already watched it, you know. So now I'm going to scrape up this fabric and try and find pieces for my uh, sleeve because you know, I just kind of went for it and started cutting and now I'm like, oh, I need sleeves. Um, there, is, there are different options for this pattern. You can do sleeveless where you just band. You can do a, a short sleeve, three quarter sleeve, long sleeve. It's really up to you. I'm doing a short sleeve because it is warm here in South Georgia where I'm at. So we're going with the short sleeve or there is the uh, possibility of me never wearing it because I will die of heat stroke. It is so hot sometimes here in South Georgia and I don't need the extra fabric. I love, one thing I love is I do love three quarter sleeves. So I do three quarter sleeves a lot, but for the most part, my favorite is short sleeve. And this is one of the reasons why I love, so there's my sleeve. This is one of the reasons why I love the, um, the Lucky Girl because you get that sleeve but you don't get the heat because you got that slit on the sides right there. You got some nice, a nice breeze going right here on my arm. Love it. Have you made the lucky girl yet? Let me know if you've made it. Lindsay, you've cut yourself like that before. That is so, it was so painful. And then it feels like those are like, they're almost like paper cuts, but they take forever to heal. Forever. Awful. Just be very careful with those rotary cutters. All right, so I'm cutting my sleeve. And then now all we have left to do is our neckband. I'm gonna grab, ooh, see, always close it. I'm trying to give you some tips on how not to uh, cut your finger. But, you know, if I followed my own tips, maybe that would be good. Um, so now I'm gonna try to figure out a place that is big enough. I don't know if you are like me, but I always try to use uh, the most of, get the most use of my fabric. So I'll like, you know, try to uh, find like little pieces. I'm gonna just go to the bottom because I know that there's gonna be a place over there, but I wanna cut around where I have already kind of cut my fabric. So that way I can make the most use of my fabric especially when it's fabric that I really like, you know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna tilt you up. Hi! Okay, so I know you're kind of crooked right now because then you can see all my mess back there, but I, um, 
this is new for me. I'm doing it on my laptop today. Usually I use uh, like a, a stand and this one doesn't have a stand. So I'm like, okay. So yes, that is really cool now. I, somebody posted, um, now we've had that new pattern um, with the socks, so forward socks. So all those, I honestly have bins, I'm gonna show you one of them, of scraps that I'm using for socks now. And I use it uh, for socks or for the frisky underwear. Um, have you tried that pattern yet? The frisky underwear pattern is amazing. Um, it's one of my favorites. Like, you know, whenever I choose what I'm gonna wear, what underwear I'm gonna wear, wear that day, I always go for the frisky underwear. It's so comfortable um, and really easy to sew. So if you haven't done it, frisky panties, if you haven't done them yet, uh, go ahead and do them because you will love them. Honestly, they are so comfy, so comfy. So I use my scraps for that or for the socks. Okay, so my pattern is all cut out. So we're gonna go ahead and sew. But before I do, I when I was doing the sew along for the uh, flounce top, the forever flounce, we were uh, doing, obviously it's a black uh, top that I was making and my serger is threaded for black so i said i asked the the members i have thread hanging to my fingers i asked the members if i should go ahead and do um thread my serger now or just thread it on live and they're all like oh we'll do it live that way everybody can see if you have any questions about how you thread your serger um so i'm gonna go ahead and thread it and show you how i do it um i don't know that i do it any special way but I just wanted to show you. So in case you have questions, you can ask me. Uh, yes, the scrunchies and the doll clothes. Um, I love that too. I have my nieces um, all have the cutest uh, little dolls that kind of look like them. And so um, I love making dresses for them. And of course the scrunchies. I have one around here somewhere because my hair gets in my way when I'm sewing. So like I made it pretty for y'all because you know, uh, you know, just made it pretty, but then usually on a regular basis, it's on a bun right here at the top of my head with a scrunchie. <laughs> uh, yes, and you know what? Um, right now is a perfect uh, time to go by because of the Wacky Wednesday. There's so many really, really good patterns for a dollar, so go check them out. Okay, I'm gonna tilt you over, bring you over here to my sewing machine. This is my serger. I have a uh, it's a Brother 1034D serger, and don't judge me, please. Uh, there are, there is, uh, I just, I don't know why. I have, I had another serger, and I don't know why this serger always seems to have, like, no matter what I sew, it's always, like, dusty. Like, the dust clings to it. I don't understand. And I try to clean it, but... It just like everything clings to it. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and thread it. Um, I'm going to find my scissors and just cut. I used, like I said, black for my other one, so that's why it was threaded in black. Um, usually for my loopers, I uh, will use uh, like a woolly nylon um, thread. If you can see, I'll show you the difference of the thread. Can you tell it's like poofier and it's here i'll kind of show you see how it kind of frays a little bit the really cool thing about using woolly nylon on your loopers is that the back of your where you're searched is i don't think i use woolly nylon for that one so i can't really show you that um it's kind of fuzzier so it helps it stay together better i don't know i don't always use the woolly nylon if i have it in hand i will use it I do buy it. Um, I try to, to. I tend to buy the. Um, I tend to buy like uh, black and uh, white and like a taupe color and like an off white color, which are the colors I use the most on my serger. Um, and tend to buy like those with the woolly nylon and then buy the um, other ones regular. But sometimes I don't have them in hand, so I just use uh, regular thread, which is works fine um still so i've never really had an issue no i know uh serger 
it's scary, but honestly, it's I think it's so much easier when you have a serger than um, sewing machine. It does knits. If you're working with knits, honestly, if you are able to find yourself a serger, it is such a game changer when it comes to knits. Um, this one I found on sale. Well, not this one. I had another one like it, but this one uh, was actually gifted to me. But um, you can find it on Amazon, and sometimes they'll have sales um, where you can find it at a you know discounted price. Um, it's an entry level sewing machine, so I uh, it, you can't really sew like something super heavy on it because it might not work very well. But for just regular everyday knit sewing, it works amazing. And um, so yeah, so I like it. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab my thread, and I'm just gonna put all my combs up there. Now I'm using, I have cones, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my cones, but sometimes when I'm sewing so a project that is like a different color, like a pink or something like that, and I don't have all my cones of that color, what I'll do sometimes is I'll grab some uh, of my bobbins and I'll, I'll wind them up with the color I want, and then I'll put them on the little thing right here and, and, um, and use the bobbin thread, even though that usually, means that you have to thread a couple of them because of the fact that there's you can't fit that much in it. But that also, I've also done that before. So how to thread your serger is actually kind of easy um, because a lot of times it has the number. So we'll start with number one, there's a number one, and we're gonna do that for all of them. So it's kind of up, you can't really see it, but it's right there. And we go up to the number one, and here's got the number two and three. I'll show you how easy this one is to thread. And four, and five, can you see the inside right there? Um, why do I redo it? Because I, do you mean like tie it? Do you sometimes tie it and then just let it run through? I've I tried to do that. So six, seven, eight. I've tried to do that before, just tie it and run it through. But I feel like sometimes I get much more frustrated trying to tie it and make it go through than I do just threading my serger. It really isn't. I don't find it as hard anymore. I guess maybe I'm used to it. I'm doing it like so many times that I just, it, it doesn't seem like it takes very long time. So I just thread it every time. So on this one, the hardest part of the whole thing really is right here, number nine, I guess. Um, it's a little piece that's inside of it that you have to pull out and that's where your thread goes. I pull it out enough that you can see it hang as far out as I can. So I turn my wheel so that it's hanging out as far out as I can and fit my thread right through the back of it where it's supposed to go. And then I pull that close. Now when I feed it to my needle, I make sure that the little, my next looper, the little uh, uh, like uh, where my looper, my other needle is on that little, uh, I'm drawing a blank, I'm so sorry. That little uh, bar right there where that needle is hanging onto is kind of out of the way. And I feed that thread between with my tweezers. Now these come usually with your uh, serger. And now I'm like shaking because I'm talking to you all and I'm like, ah. Okay, so I make sure with my with my little tweezers things, I put it between the that bar of my other needle and my foot. So I don't put it on the outside. I put it in between the two of them and pull it. And there it is. So that one is done. Okay. And then um, yes, sometimes I do, I I have I usually use this color a lot. This is like a taupe color. And a lot of times I just use this one for for all kinds of, of sewing, but sometimes I like to change it. And honestly, I feel like threading this serger is easy, so I don't I don't have a hard time with it. Okay, so next again, three, four, five. So you make sure you go in order. One, two, three, four, and six, seven, and then this one goes right on the next one. And that was really the hardest part of the whole thing. Ah. Or the fact that my thread sticks to my fingers. That's kind of hard to. And pull it with my tweezers. Honestly, this is easier than it looks. I'm making it look harder than it is because I stick it to me. All right, here we go. 
it always wants to stick on this little thing right here so i make sure that it's free and clear and it went to the back and then the next one this is my thread right here one two three four and then we come around the back go up to five and around and then six and fit it through that first that the right needle the needle on the right and pull it through put it under i like to put it under the little foot holder thing and then the last one and i am so sorry my ball burnt out and i haven't changed it yet so it's kind of dark in there you can't really see very well i hope you can kind of see what i'm doing i'll try to get a new bulb and then maybe one of these days i'll actually show you a good video of how to thread a closer up video so you can see it with the light bulb on you can actually kind of see exactly what i'm doing now i'm just threading that needle again that's the second needle the one on the left pull it through and you are done and done that was it now i made it look harder than it was but uh it really isn't that hard so there it is my serger is threaded so if you want to use some scrap fabric and kind of check it and make sure that it's done correctly yeah i have some scrap fabric right here and just there it is all done i have mine set on uh uh like between four and five usually is where they're always kind of set on and i don't really move them very much i just kind of leave it on that so now we're going to go ahead and get started on actually sewing our top i'm going to show you how easy it is to sew this shark bite top it honestly it is super super easy you always change the check the threads yes i i um have to make sure i check them every time i don't always check them but i probably should check them every time because then i will know exactly what um if they came through all right or not i don't usually check them and now if you're doing this pattern again can be done on your serger which the serger makes it really super quick but you can also do it on your sewing machine what i like to do if i'm going to sew my sewing machine i like to go ahead and grab the fabric that i'm using and a lot of times what i'll do uh i haven't done this but i'll say um because i have a serger so i don't i don't um have the i don't have the need to do this but what will be kind of really easy for you is if you grab different kind of fabrics, but let's say rayon spandex, French terry, cotton lycra, double brush poly, and you go on your sewing machine and you just play with your stretch stitches on your sewing machine, whatever the, those are, uh, lightning bolt, zigzag, or even if you just have a zigzag, the width of the zigzag, the length of the zigzag, and you just play on it. And that's what I did when I first started sewing and I didn't have a serger. I would play on it with the fabric that I was going to use on that project. So if I'm using rayon spandex, which is what I'm using today, I would go on there and try, a, I would just use a scrap piece of fabric um, of my rayon spandex and go on there and try different kind of um, stretch stitches to see which one gave me the best stretch and which one worked best with that fabric. So then I'll do like a, um, make a, um, like a inventory of sorts. Oh, here's Bo. Have you all met Bo yet? I'm going to show him to you because he likes to say hello when we're sewing together. This is my little puppy, Bo, who is not really a puppy anymore. He's four months, but he is huge, and he likes to sew with us. Do you have friends that sew with you? He is. He loves sewing. I have to be careful when I roll my chair because he likes to be right next to me all the time. Yes, his name is Bo. He's super cute. Okay, so what I do is... I go ahead and grab all my pattern, all my fabric. I'm sorry, that was like a distraction. I know I'm like, you know, like, ah, squirrel, there he is. Anyway, so um, I grab my fabric and I um, try it on different ones. So then you can do like a little database where you write on a piece of paper or on your computer or whatever, and just write down which works best for each fabric. That way, next time you're gonna use that fabric, you already know, hey, I use a zigzag stitch, uh, this width, this length, and that works really great for that fabric. And then you don't have to every time try something different. 
Now I know that some machines can be temperamental and they can change their mind at any point in time. So that might not work every single time, but it might help. So, um, so this fabric, um, I have to check back on this fabric and I'll leave it as a comment and let you know exactly where I got it. Um, I've gotten a lot of my tie dye from Olga's closet, but I know that I've also gotten tie dye from other places, but I'm pretty sure this one came from Olga's closet. Um, but I do, I, I like to, when I see something I like and, um, I like to buy, I'll, sometimes I don't even, I don't buy for a project. Do you buy for a project? Sometimes I buy for a project, but then sometimes I just like it and I'm like, okay, I need it. And then a project will come to mind later on. Um, okay, so here is our fabric. I have my front and my back. This is my back, as you can tell, because it's higher up on the neck. I'm going to grab my back and I'm going to lay it on my board face up. Now, I'm finally, going to get ready to sew. Hello. Hey. Bo. He wants to hang out. Bo wants to come and sew with me. And then I'm going to grab my front. Here's my front, as you can see, it's a lower neckband, and I'm gonna put it right sides on top of my back. So I'm meeting at the shoulders right here. I'm meeting at the shoulders right here, and then I am gonna sew my shoulder seams together, right sides together, right here. So I'm just gonna pin. Do you use pins or clips? What do you like to use? So I've never tried really tried clips look at my iron oof sorry about that i was turning it sideways i was turning it on because i'll need it but um i've never used clips because i have so many pins and i always feel like i don't know if i want to buy clips i don't know if i'm gonna like them talk me into them maybe i'll get myself some pins i mean clips but i just pin for now and then we're gonna go ahead and sew those shoulder seams thank you that was my little helper kayla He's hanging out with me this week. Are you kids hanging out with you this week? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and sew those shoulder seams together. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my serger. Excuse me. And I'm just going to sew it right here on my serger. Sew those shoulder seams together. Our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. And sometimes what I do, I know people have asked me, hey, well, people have asked me that before. I go a little bit farther up and then I come around and just let my knife cut my thread um, sometimes when I'm sewing like this. Clips for serger, pins for sewing machine. I guess that does make sense. Maybe I need to look at Amazon and find me some clips on Amazon because I everybody that uses clips said they love them. So maybe I need to do that. Okay, I'm going... thing is that sometimes when I use pins I like to pin them a little bit like I'll show you when I'm doing the side of the shark bite because it's a long side but I like to pin, pin them kind of farther in like a little bit in and then I don't even have to move them when I'm surging so because they kind of get on my nerves when you got to move every single pin as you're going and stop every single time but maybe pins will be uh, uh, clips will be different always make sure when you sew uh, when you're done with a seam to look and make sure that you cut on both sides. You cut the front and the back and that you didn't leave a gap right there because then when you when you go to wear it, um, you will end up having a gap on your top and that will not be fun. Um, I did that at Christmas time for my mom. Caleb, just say hi. This is my son, Caleb. <laughs> he likes to hang out with me when I'm sewing, um, especially when there's uh, no school. And so I... Um, I made my mom the undercover, no, not the undercover, the uh, Discover top and for Christmas. And you know, I was, everybody, I don't know if you are like me, but I was doing last minute presents. And it was a last minute, I did it like the night before we left for Christmas and all that stuff. And I gave it to her and I was so excited and she loved it. She's like, so cute, blah, blah, blah. She puts it on and guess what? I had left like a gap on her arm, like, kind of long because the fabric I was using was kind of a thick fabric. You couldn't really tell until she put it on because I didn't check it. So I tell you all, you need to check your fabric. That way, if there is a gap, you can fix it before you give it to someone else. And then you have to bring it back home, fix it, mail it back. And by that time now, it's probably too hot for her to wear because I made it long sleeve. Yes, that is the worst. So 
So always check it. Another thing that I always, people say that works really great and I've tried it lately and I love it is always steaming your seams. It gives it a great look, uh, helps to keep them even and looking better. So I try to steam my seams always. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and attach our sleeves. Now, if you're doing, you can do, um, go ahead and sew your sides first if you're doing um, bands. Um, so I'm gonna do this first and then I'm gonna show you how you can sew your sides if you wanted to do bands. Um, so I've got my sleeve and I like to keep it folded. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, notch the top. So this is like the top of my sleeve, the half. And by notching, I mean I just cut a little bit on your on my uh, of my fabric right there to mark it. I don't cut enough that it's gonna matter once I sew it on. It's less than a quarter inch, so like when I sew it on, I eat over that, and it just gets sewn in, so it will be fine. Um, <clears throat> but if for some reason my clip or my pin comes off, I know exactly where I'm supposed to go. I know exactly where the middle is because it's still marked right there. <clears throat> Yes. So even if you did have to stop with the clips, um, you still want to you want to make sure that the fabric is cut in there anyway. So maybe it is good to take some time. I just sometimes like go like shoo, raising while I'm sewing. Probably not the best thing to do. OK, so this is the right side of my fabric and this is the right side of my fabric as well. This is my arm side and I'm going to go ahead and place my uh, fabric right sides together at that seam, that um, shoulder seam right there. And I pin. And then I go all the way down, matching those raw edges together, turning my sleeve as I go to match up those raw edges. And I'm going to pull it just a tiny bit to so it'll match up. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll do the middle point first. Then I'll go to the edge and do that side point right here, that end one. And then I make sure that it's all nice and even as I do the other, put pins on the other side, on the, not the other side, but the, the whole sleeve area. And I put a couple pins there. Honestly, I say I put a couple pins, but honestly, sometimes I just put like one pin and just go for it. Probably not very good. You know, you get comfortable with your with your fabric and your machine, and then you kind of just go for it. No, maybe am I the only one? Uh, <clears throat> so I'm doing the same for the other side. And most of the time, I don't know how do you do it. Tell me how you do it. Do you Go ahead and pin both sleeves first and then sew them or do you sew one sleeve and then go and pin the other one how do you do it do you do it every time let me know comment and let me know i want to know what you do okay so here's one sleeve pinned so you can see it right there i'm going to go ahead and do the other sleeve as well because that is just what i like to do what do you like to do again face up on my board and grabbing my sleeve, folding it in half, making sure it's in half, matching my top, getting that point at the top, right sides together on my board. You do both at the same time, one at a time, both at the same time, two, and then so let's see. Full sleeve, yes. I pin both at the same time. I feel like I just, I don't know, get it all done. And sometimes when I'm sewing different patterns, do you do this? I'll cut all like different patterns that are using the same color thread. Like I have another pattern that uses white. So I'll go ahead and um, cut it out and then I'll sew everything that is the one color thread and then I'll sew everything that's the other one and just like even by stages. So I have like projects that are started that are like halfway done because they're like, I just work through different patterns or do, are you one of those that has to finish one pattern at a time? How do you do it? Do you finish one pattern at a time? Or do you do a bunch, a bunch of them at the same time? Have like a continuous line of patterns, you know, like when you're reading a book and it's just like you read different kind of books or do you stick with one, just one book and finish it? Caleb says he sticks with one book and finishes it and then he moves on to the next one. <laughs> it just depends because they're all different. Okay, so I'm pinning this one all the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew it along the edge. Uh, right sides together and sewing it 
all the way around and then my sleeves will be attached and honestly now we just have the sides and our um <clears throat> neck band so i'm gonna go ahead and sew it again make sure that you are um catching both layers of your fabric right here when you're gonna sew I like to usually just kind of organize it first and go. On this one, I didn't do what I usually do, which is on my sleeves, I do go closer to my sleeve, my sleeve edge with my pins because I don't want them to uh, come apart. But on my sides, I usually go pretty far, far down. But always make sure that your pat, your fabric is out of the way, your other fabric, because you don't want it to get cut under. So I use, I usually like to use this hand to feel my fabric. And if I feel like it's thicker than it should be, then I know that there's like some fabric stuck there that shouldn't be. And then I know that I need to make sure that I move it out of the way. So I just kind of feel for it as I'm sewing it up. Tell me what you all are sewing today. Are you sewing right now or what are you doing? I want to know what you're doing. There we go. There was one sleeve and now we're going to do the other one. Are you sewing the shark bite today or are you sewing the lucky girl? Are you doing doll patterns? I love to see um, doll dresses. And did you see all the new princess capsule dresses that just came out? Honestly. Those are amazing. Amazing. Or are you doing school right now? We did. So we did a couple hours of school already. And we'll be doing um, some more school later on today. We kind of split it up a little bit throughout the day. So we're not just sitting at the table all day long. So yeah. That's always fun. Did you have lunch already or are you about to have lunch? And if you're about to have lunch, what are you having for lunch? I want to know. I want to know all the things. <clears throat> oh. Yes. All right. There went my sleeves. Waiting for fabric to come. I love waiting for fabric to come. While we were doing our uh, other sew along, see if you I want to make sure I don't run him over. While we were doing the um, sew along for the Forever Flounce, I saw my, uh, he's picking up pins off the ground because I drop pins all the time. Um, I saw my mail carrier come in and drop off some stuff and I am also waiting for fabric. So I'm really, really excited. Ooh, doll swimsuit. That sounds amazing. Uh, chicken soup. I love chicken soup. Apple and peanut butter. I love peanut butter. Coffee and donuts. Kendra, that is my language right there. Oh, I love it. Working out Adam Spice. Yesterday we sewed up at Adam Spice and I was so excited. It turned out so well. Okay, now my sleeves are done. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the sides. Now, if you're doing the color blocking option, then you would go ahead and first you would attach your color blocked uh, pieces. I'm trying to figure out, it's kind of hard for me to figure out where I'm supposed to go with this um, so, so you can see it all. Okay, so if you're doing the color block option, you can do um, put on that piece first, but if you're not, then you can go ahead and <clears throat> just go ahead and sew that side like I'm sewing this side right here. I'm matching right sides together on this side. I'm gonna match right here on the that um, seam right here at the armpit. And then make sure that the raw edges on this side close right here. Right sides together. Sorry, my son keeps walking in and out of the room so I'm like trying to figure out what he's doing. He's just running around. And then the uh, sleeve. So I just went all the way down. Now, if you're doing sleeveless, you would sew the side up. You wouldn't have a sleeve right here because you're going to band that sleeve. 
Yes, right here. I know, I love it too. There's just something about uh, tie dye that makes me happy. And blue, I'm gonna do the other side as well because you know I like to do both sides at the same time. Blue is my favorite color, so this is perfect for this. Sore? Sorry. Okay, and then uh, we're going to do the side. And like I said, uh, I'm going to pin it. I'm going to show you how I pin it. Careful. I'm going to pin it farther in. You see how I match right sides together. So these are my sides, right sides together at the raw edge. And I grab a pin and I usually like to pin it like about almost an inch away from the edge as I pin. And then a lot of times if I pin it that far away from the edge, I will all like when I'm sewing with my serger, as long as the pin is not too close to my serger, I will leave the pin in and just sew it all the way through. That way I don't have to stop every two seconds. Um, but then, you know, you always have to be careful that you don't skip, uh, you know, your fabric doesn't fall down on you and ends up causing you problems. Okay, so there it is. All sewn together. Now we're going to go ahead and sew it on the sewn uh, serger. And this one's going to take a little bit because it's just going to go straight through. While I'm doing this, tell me, what is your favorite pattern? What's your favorite Ellie and Mac pattern? Which one is your favorite to sew? I love the Discover T. See how I just did that? And then I just take the pins off after that. That way it makes it, I feel like it's faster. There are so many patterns I love though. I can't, I don't know if I could narrow it down to just a couple. I'm gonna remove that one because I wanna fix my fabric. And that one's kinda close to the edge, so I'm gonna move that one as well. I don't know why that sometimes falls down. Just because I'm going too fast, I don't know. Keep up. <laughs> Wrapped in love. Everyday Tea, Twist It Up, Discover Tea. Yes, those are awesome. Wrapped in Love is beautiful. You need to make it, Kendra, because you will love it. It is so flattering. It is beautiful. So pretty. And we did have a sew along on that. Um, so if you want to go to on our event tab and look at our past sew alongs, you will see um, what past sew alongs we did. And the Wrapped in Love will be in there. And we also, so if you like the sew along style of sewing, or we also, this is going to be so beautiful. Or we also have the um, the uh, other style of sewing, the um, YouTube tutorial. So that the YouTube tutorial is just me. We'll just go through it together and sew it really quickly. Now the sew along we take every day. We do a little bit every day. So that's good. Um, so now we're doing our neck band and we're almost done. We do neck band and we hem and we're done. That's it. So <clears throat> what we do is we, what I like to do is I like to grab my, ba my band and I like to go ahead and fold it first to give it that memory crease. So I'm folding it wrong sides together. This is something somebody um, said to me that they like to do. And since she told me that she liked to do it this way, I started doing it and I really, really actually, and I think it works really well. It helps me because then when I sew it together on the round, I have already that crease to help me fold it back. <clears throat> right here. I'm going to fold it now right sides together at that raw edge on the short raw edge. And I'm going to sew that together right now. I am wearing the Lucky Girl top. So 
so cute. I love that slit on the arm. So pretty. So I sewed it together. I'm just going to trim the uh, tails because it's going to be sewn onto my top. So I think you'll be good. Right here. And now I'm going to go ahead and open it and fold it where I folded. <laughs> Do you see Bo's tail? Where I folded that, where I made that fold already. And so now it's easy to fold because it's already folded. So what I do is I'm going to go first over here at the seam right here and pin at the seam. And I'm going to grab the seam and fold it and go to the front. So here's my seam. I go to the front and this is my half. And what I do is I also like to notch that just like I did on my sleeve. Do a little bump right there. Because when I'm attaching my neckband, I don't want to not attach it evenly. So then I touch my front and my back together. And I go to the sides and I notch those sides and those are my quarters. One, two. And I still pin because I'm going to pin it to my neckband anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it now. There you go. My neckband is done, so I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to grab my top. I'm going to match uh, the shoulder seams and put them together, and I'm going to go to the front, and I am going to match, just nip a little bit right there for my front. I'm going to go to the sides. I'm going to go to the back. And nip a little bit to the back as well. Same thing, just notching. Again, it's just a little tiny bit. You won't even be able to see it when you sew it. And then I'm going to match the front and the back where I marked. And I'm going to go to the side because your shoulder seams are not your quarter points. If you go by your shoulder seams, then your uh, neckband is not going to be even. So we need to make sure that we find the quarter points. Because obviously the front is lower than the back. So you have, you'll have more material going on this part than you will on the back. So if you go by your shoulder seams, then you will have it very tight at the front and loose in the back. So we don't want that. So once we do that, we're going to go ahead and grab our band. And then we're going to pin it to those pins, to, to those marks we just made, right sides together. <clears throat> matching the quarter points. Matching all the quarter points. Quarter points. And right sides together. That was always so weird to me when I first started sewing, like everything being right sides together, because I'm like, you can't see the seam. But no, that's what it's supposed to be. See? is the right side right here maybe lindsay can answer that question for us about ellie and mac there we go I'm glad, Cindy. I'm glad they helped you. Yes, this is how I make sure that I quarter them. And I like to have the little pin, the little clips, because then when I remove my pins, you can still see the little clippings and it will be able to help you um, in case to get it even. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do my neck bands. And usually I don't have much of a hard time with neck bands. And this will be the first time my neck band will turn out horrible. Not the first time. Okay, I'm not saying every time my honey band turns out great, but for the most part, but this will turn out horrible because I'm showing you. But hopefully it doesn't. Okay, so I always start at the back where that back seam is, and I just do like a couple stitches, not very many, just to get my um my needle in there. And you can just turn it down and get your needle in, then it really is doesn't matter. I grab, I use my uh ring finger and my thumb. And I grab where my notch, where my quarter is, ring finger and my thumb, I even them out. Then I use my middle finger and my index finger. And so with this one, I kind of pull to make sure that my band is even with my um, 
bodice. I grab with these two fingers farther up like so, so I can keep it straight. And with this hand, I guide it. So I make sure that it's all even and I go. And I guide it. And I always sew with my band face up, my band up top, okay? And then I go to the next quarter point. I make sure I take this slow because honestly, we just did all this work to make this beautiful top and then we're gonna get to the end and end up, don't do that because you're shaking the table. We're gonna get to the top and, and uh, just to the last, one of the last steps and end up messing it up by messing up the, um, the neckband. So um, I wanna make sure that I take my time with this neckband part. So again, same thing and I go. And then I pull my pin and then I'm going again to the next part. And I sew, I sew. Honestly, I sing a lot when I'm <laughs> when I'm sewing. I'm trying not to sing too much to y'all today and um because it's not pretty. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Neck band is finished. And now if you want to, you can go ahead and top stitch that neck band down if you wanna do that. But that's our neck band. What I do, I always do is I always steam it down. Don't do that, you're shaking the table. I always steam it down, and then I have this tail right here. You end up with a tail. How I like to get rid of my tail is <clears throat> I put my tail right over my seam like so, and then I go on my sewing machine, and I use a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine and I put it right on that seam and I zigzag stitch that tail down right there can't even see it and then I cut the rest of it off and now it is gone it's tucked in there. Can you see it? Gone. And we have a top. <clears throat> yeah, I do that when I clean too. I do it all the time. I remember as a teenager, my friend and I usually used to like make up songs as we were doing something and just kind of like sing random, you know, like throughout the day, whatever is happening songs. Do y'all do that? Am I the only one? No, maybe? Some people do. There's gotta be somebody out there that does that. Can't be the only one. Oh, I'm not the only one. My friend and I used to do it, so. There we go. Yes, if you're top stitching, you can just tuck it in and you'll top stitch. I love, I don't know why, but I love the change of the color right here. Is that weird that I love that? My top is almost finished. Now we're just hemming. When I hem, I always like to turn my top inside out to to uh, fold my hem. Um, here is my sleeve. Sometimes I like to get rid of my threads, but sometimes I don't. I am sure I understand. I'm not talking to you, Siri. <laughs> okay. Um. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fold it a half an inch. A half an inch is our, our um, hem allowance. Do you measure your, your hem allowance? Or do you just go for it? I just go for it. Steam it. I will pin it though sometimes. Uh, with rayon spandex, I don't always pin because rayon spandex keeps that nice crease once you steam it. So it doesn't move very much. I do, I eyeball it. I never ever measure it. It's probably not good. But I just feel like I'm so used to, I kind of already know what it is. 
So I just kind of fold it in and do it half an inch. Half an inch. Oof. Oof. Half an inch. And then we do our do you also, do you pin all your um, hem first? I do. I just eyeball it because I'm like, mm, it's fine. It's good. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do my whole hem at the bottom. I just fold it. Now, when it is something that's kind of curved, honestly, people ask me all the time, how do you do curved hems? I All I do is I just kind of pull at it a little bit and tell the fabric what to do. I'm kind of like a no nonsense when it comes to like fabric being uh, temperamental. Now some fabrics are super easy and some fabrics are not. Rayon spandex I found that is so easy to kind of manipulate when you're doing it. So as I'm going around, I kind of just like pull it, taunt it a little bit just so you can sit straight and then I steam it. Now with my, like I said, with rayon spandex, it's super easy uh to do there's some fabrics like um when you're using like a cotton lycra or even a um uh uh custom cotton lycra sometimes it can be stiff and it can be kind of hard to do but if you just kind of tug at it a little bit and now i don't pull it i just kind of tug at it a little bit to stretch it out right here now when i get for my shark bite when i get here at the end I just go straight, as you can see, kind of folds over right here, straight. I hope you can see that. It's just straight over, like so. And then um, I pin it. And then when I turn to my other side, the general setting on the serger the one i keep it on uh the number i usually have it on is like four or five depending on what you're doing uh sometimes i just put it in the four in the middle of four and five and it works just fine what i would do is if you have having issues with your sewing machine i will set it maybe set it use a scrap pack a scrap pack a scrap of your fabric and um put it all on force and th try it and see what it looks like and how it works and then I would change it. No, that's fine. It's, it's a great question. And then I would change it and to maybe fives and try it again and see how it works. And that's the best way to get um, a feel for your serger. All sergers are different. So they have a little bit of a, a different intention or whatever like that. With this one, this is a Brother uh, 1034D. Um, I keep them all in between four and five and I haven't had any issues. I sew both woven and um, knit in that setting for this sewing machine. But like I said, they're all kind of a little bit different. So what I would do again, I would just grab a scrap piece of the fabric you're using that you're gonna be working with. And I keep looking at your comment, like I'm looking at your face right now. I'm looking at you, but I'm not really looking at you. Here we go. And so um, I use that and then I kind of uh, make sure and, and kind of trial and error it. But like I said, on mine, I keep it between a four and a five and it, it worked just fine if anybody else has any advice for that um feel free to chime in uh, and let us know what you do with your serger okay so in the corner it went down straight and now i'm going to fold the other side is going to come right up over it and kind of make it like a little fold right there oh did you see that i got hot and tingly and my uh, i know this is weird but like my armpits got kind of itchy. So then when you get right here in the corner, I'm gonna show you right now what it looks like on my corner. Hey, you're welcome. Ask me any questions you wanna ask me. If I don't know the answer, honestly, we have so many awesome people on this page. We have so many awesome people on this page that would be able to, um, that are way more knowledgeable than I am. See right here, it's overlapping together right there. So that's how I get that corner to look nice and sharp. 
right there. Now it's got a okay. Now I'm going to finish up and we'll be done. I'm gonna keep going all the way. I have a cover stitch is what I use for my hemming. If you don't have a cover stitch, you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or a double needle. Or if you're a rebel like me, before I had a cover stitch, um, when I would make a top like this, like the uh, shark bite, because it has a loose hem and it doesn't really matter, I would I used to do a longer straight stitch. Now, don't, you gotta be careful because you know, the thing about doing a straight stitch is that if you pull on it, it's going to um, rip, it's going to come apart, it's going to um, tear. But I used to do it when it's a loose hem. Sometimes I do a straight stitch because it's a loose hem, I'm not gonna be pulling on it. Because I didn't really love the look of the zigzag, but there are some really good um, stretch stitches on sewing machines that just look really cute anyway. So you can just go for something cute like that. Or a double needle. If you have a double needle, you can also use a double needle for that. Gives it the same look. Really cute. All right. Have a good time with uh, food, dinner. I know, getting ready to eat lunch in a little bit. So now my hems are ready and now I'm gonna hem. Now before I hem though, I have my cover stitch and it's, all, and it's also on white. So I'm gonna bring you over and I'm gonna show you how I thread my cover stitch. Cause I know some people have questions about cover stitch and how hard it is. It is not hard at all. Cover stitch is actually even easier to thread than your serger. Now I use, this is a pace setter cover stitch 2440 CV. Um, this is a brother cover stitch as well. Another entry level sewing machine. I uh, saved for this one because I, like so many of you, hate hemming. <laughs> and so this made hemming 10, no, not 10, 100 times easier. So I was like, I need to save for it because I need it. And then some of you who have it and are just scared to use it, it really isn't that scary, especially this. This one is super easy. So I'm just gonna push down and take the black threads off. off. Okay, now with this one, I like to use, again, the woolly nylon on the looper. You only need one um, looper right here. Okay, I'm just gonna put it right here and then I'm gonna show you in a minute. Okay, and then you can either have two threads, which is just a regular, um, see right here, you can see it, two threads, or you can do three threads. Um, I've seen, I don't usually do three threads, but I've seen it in more like athletic wear. I've seen the three threads uh, top stitch. Um, so you can do that with the machine. If you're using two threads, you have to make sure that you remove the one, the third needle. So I only have two needles on here right now because I'm using the two threads, okay? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and the first one, it got, this has number one, then number two just goes right wrapped around it. Number three is like an eyelet right here. Ooh, do you hear that? Our neighbor um, has a, um, uh, what are they called, drum set? And he practices all the time and we can hear him because he's right down over and he practices in his garage. And when he first started, he was so bad and now he's gotten so much better. So it's really neat to hear his progress. And I don't really mind. I don't really mind that he's doing that. It's fun. Um, he doesn't really do it super late at night. So I've never had an issue with it. I think it's kind of cool, but it's funny because we have a neighborhood page and um, sorry, I'm like my eyes do. We have a neighborhood page and um, I love that people will come on there and they're like said something about our neighborhood band and it's that, that one person that plays the, the drum, has the drum set, it's really neat. Okay, I don't know why I just talked about that. I just heard it. Anyway, so then I push down on my tension thing and I pull it. So that's number five. 
Okay, so now we have like all these little things right here. But honestly, if you just follow the diagram, one over the thing, two behind the little uh, thing that comes up and down, then around the circle. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, if you can't really see it very well, I'm hoping that, oh, we do have a video on YouTube where I show it a little bit closer. And then we go through the little thing. Here's another one. You pull. There's this little thing that comes out where the needle is. You pull that down. You go right through it. You go through the needle. Woolly nylon gets a little fluffy. So you kind of have to help it. And then it goes through. Pull it back. And it closes in. So that's all you're doing down there at the bottom. Now the two top ones. On the serger, you start from uh, right to left. On the cover stitch, you do the far one on the right, and then you do the one, the first one on the left. So it kind of is a little bit different. One, two, three, four, around. This light does work. I don't know why I didn't turn it on. Up and around, and then we're going to the end, and we're just going to thread the needle. Go behind the little thing. Super easy. Not a very close up view of it, but I'm just showing you how it can be so easy to thread the cover stitch. I think that sometimes we're so afraid of it because we are just have never done it before. And it's the same with sewing. Um, get so afraid of something, sewing it for the first time, and then once we do it once and we just kind of buy the bullet and just do it, then you're like, oh, okay, well, that wasn't too hard. That wasn't too bad. You gain that confidence and you realize that you can do it. And the last one, through that needle. And that's it. And now I'm just going to pull those threads under. So I turn my uh, wheel and I pull them out underneath it. And they're ready to go. So look how easy this is. I'm going to grab my fabric I'm going to place it on here and there's different lines that show you where that is whoa what's wrong buddy what's wrong you want some attention and then I'm going to go ahead and go all the way through just feeding it as I go yeah my husband is outside and Bo knows he's outside so he wants to go outside with my husband so that's why he keeps complaining he keeps saying I want to go out there okay and now I'm going to show you this is the back side right there, catching my hem. And this is the outside. I didn't do very well right here when I met them together. I kind of didn't overlap them correctly. I'm going to trim them a little bit, but this is what it looks like on the outside. It's blurry. Here we go. So nice and even. And super easy. And then I'm going to do the other one. Same thing. Do y'all have any questions? Oh, snow. Okay, so when I was a teenager, I always wanted to live somewhere where there was snow. I am originally from um, Colombia, South America, and it's very where I'm from is very, very tropical. So it's always um, warm and or rainy. <laughs> and so it's very, very tropical. But then when I moved to the States, when we moved to the States, um, we moved to Florida, which again, very tropical, warm, um, almost like suffocatingly hot. Then I, um, after uh, we moved here, so I lived in that kind of climate all my life. And so when I was a teenager, I was like, oh, I want to move somewhere where it's cold and I can get to wear all the cute clo uh, clothing and all that stuff like that. Um, I married my husband and he is in the Air Force. And so the farthest north we've ever been, well, 
we were in Mississippi, but that's not really north. It's um, South Carolina, and it snowed one year, and our son was, I think, about one and a half. I'm like, uh, please take me back. I can't do this. I am such a wimp when it comes to snow. Now, we go to Tennessee once a year, and um, we go and like to like in the mountains and you know experience a little bit of snow and stuff like that. And that's about all I can handle. I don't know why. I'm just, I guess I wasn't, uh, maybe you get used to it. I just can't do it. I can't, I don't know why. I love the look of it. I love how it looks. It's so beautiful. But I just can't. I need the sun. I need the sun. All right. Well, this is all for today. I think we are done with this top. I have uh, to hem the bottom, but that is it. We are done. I will take a picture of it and post it so you all can see the final results. I hope you had a fun time sewing along. This was just the spur of the moment. I figured, you know, it's kind of fun sewing with, with um, others. It's kind of talking along and troubleshooting some questions. If you have any questions, let me know. Comment below. You can even private message me and I can help you, try to help you out. Here's my hem. Um, if you have any questions for me, this is just a piece of thread that got cut right there. There it is. Um, and let me know. And then I can help you with that. Um, if you want to be part of our sew alongs on a regular basis, um, this was a long one because we did the whole thing and I showed you different things. Um, but when we do our sew alongs on the event page, um, we go slowly day by day. So every day we do just a little bit every day. Um, so it's kind of fun because we take it slow and then um, we finish up by the end of the week. Or if you like a more fast-paced form of Sew Along, you can visit us on our YouTube page, um, uh, Ellie, and Mac, Ellie and Mac YouTube page, and we actually have sewing tutorials for most of our patterns. Um, and you can always put in requests and let us know what other um, sewing tutorials you want to see. Um, there are some really informative ones too. Sonia has some great sewing tutorials. I mean, some great tutorials too. And then she has some great tutorials on fabric. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about what kind of fabric to use for certain things. She's got some great things on there on YouTube about fabric. Um, uh, Felicia has some great things about organizing your sewing room. It, there's just a wealth of information on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. Um, go look at the different... Um, tabs that are on there and you'd be amazed of how much is already on there that maybe you have been looking for. Um, so this is all I've got for you all today. I'm going to go ahead and finish hemming my top and then I'll grab a picture of it and I'll post it on the page so you can all see how it turned out. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you are having a great, great, great day. Um, it was nice getting to talk to some of y'all. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I did or um, anything else that you want to ask. Um, and if I don't have the answer, then I know that we have so many talented um, sewists here that can help out. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.